to you by our friends of the British Council. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in New York City. And I have the pleasure of having some rugby filmmakers. Well, they're filmmakers that just happen to make a rugby uh, picture, documentary, drama, biopic thing. I have Michelle Walsh and Cass Avery. Hi, Thanks for having us. Hello, yeah. ladies. Nice Hi. to have you. Director Pleasure. and producer. Yes. Uh, of Chasing Great, the story of... I guess we could call him the greatest rugby player Let's ever, right? Go on. Yeah, Richie McCaw. <laughs> Go there. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit upset that I wasn't considered for the for the biopic slash drama dramedy. No, not a dramedy. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Richie's too serious for that. All right. So since you're the producer, yes. Um, you kind of had to facilitate this thing, if I'm not mistaken, right? Is that the role of the producer? It is. <laughs> yeah. It so, is. And yeah. Did you two know each other prior to that? We, we sure did. Yes, we did. We did. Michelle and I have worked together on, on some other productions before, and we're now working at the same production company. And so when this project came up, it was just a no-brainer to grab it and go for it. It's a great story. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you do it? Le directeur, uh, how did you get the story? And where, where it was an interesting one. We, we knew that there was the chance that he'd be retiring after the Rugby World Cup. And it was, there was just little murmurings. It, it, he certainly wasn't admitting it to anybody. Mm. Uh, and we took sort of a gutsy move to ask him if we could tell his story. And his first reaction was like, why would anybody want to see a film about me? Of course, very Richie yeah. style. Mm. And we said, oh, I think a few people might be interested. Maybe a couple. <laughs> might be a few. So we sort of just chipped away at it for a little while. And um, I remember it was November 2014. He was going to Cardiff to play his 100th test as a captain in that great stadium. And we said, look, we don't know what this is going to be, but can we come along and shoot? Can we just start filming this? And he was very kind and said, sure, why not? And um, we, I remember we were walking along outside the Millennium Stadium, such a great stadium. And uh, it was late at night, he had a hood on, and the, the, I remember the ground was wet, and this, it was such a beautiful picture. And, and we were walking along behind him, nobody even really, really recognised him. And we got to the entrance, the, you know, the turnstiles, what do you call them here? Like turnstiles. The, yeah. yeah. And, um, oh, no, we call them um, <laughs> Ludwigs. <laughs> anyway, we got to them and he, st and he paused and he said, um, wow, is that how the punters get in? I've never seen what it looks like to come in through, through the entrance like this. And I was just like, oh, my God, of course, you've never been to He's a never stadium. never needed tickets. No, yeah. he's never like watched a game yeah. like that. And, and that's when I thought, wow, there is actually so much here to him that we don't know about his life. He's been on one of the most photographed, interviewed people in New Zealand for sure. And certainly in the rugby community um, that you wouldn't find many who had, had been as interviewed as much as him. And yet I felt like we didn't know anything about him. I would have purposely made him sit and watch a match like way up in the in the nose. <laughs> yeah, he's know? done that Just now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Tell me about the, the evolution of actually getting to shooting. Yeah, so from that point, Michelle had, yeah, had taken off and, and started filming. Because this is so separate than making what... You, did you determine that you no, were going to no, do no, this? we had no idea what so we were So you're just shooting him in Cardiff. Yeah, yeah. I just took a punt. 2014. Yeah. Mm. Right, so how does now... Okay, we've got this footage. This is great. Let's go to the whole thing. Yeah, so that was, that was the big decision was how big... Would the whole thing be like what would it look like you know would it be something that we would release for television was this going to be you know a story and it, and it very quickly that, that was the interesting thing we thought this deserves to be a film it deserves to be seen in cinemas the cinema kind of transports people back into what being in the stadium is like you know it's mm. 5.1 sound it's intense it's we we watch rugby collectively and we felt like people should see this film together you know, it's that kind of experience yeah. mm -hmm. and it's big. And so we wanted the big screen. And so at that point, it was a matter of um, picking up the phone to the New Zealand Film Commission. They're a big funder of, of films in, in New Zealand. And and being in the luxurious position of only having to say about half a sentence <laughs> when they're saying, oh, uh, yeah, come, come and see us. Okay, yeah, yeah, good idea. But we didn't know the ending, right? 
Like it, right. that was the question everyone yeah. was asking. But what if he doesn't win? Can you end a film like that? And we said absolutely. The fact yeah. that he's prepared to play his last game at a World Cup and the potential of it being a loss is greater than it being a win, just statistically. Yeah, because in history there hasn't been a team yeah. to repeat. Yeah. In back-to-back cups, or a captain to mm-hmm. be a, a winner in back-to-back cups. So we thought, yeah. well, isn't that a story in itself that somebody's prepared to? to push themselves and, and test I'm not sure. Do you guys like know that, that you're in, in New York in America where we don't, we don't like losers. We don't, we, <laughs> we don't like losers. I like winners. We like yeah. winners here. Yeah. I mean, even Richie was asked that. He's like, well, yeah. what, is the, what does the ending look like? And I was like, well, you tell me. You know, it's your story. You just put extra pressure on his shoulders. It was a little bit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but they're making a we movie know. about me. I got to win now. <laughs> Right, um, but but we just thought there's so much for kids to learn. We wanted it to be a character study on what made a, a human so extraordinary that would transcend rugby, that would transcend sport. And I remember thinking a lot, you know, what what mm. can a 12 year old kid take out of this? What can they learn about the what what it takes to be the best in the world? Attention. What's the, the difference between be good and great? great? And how yeah. do we how do we <laughs> you know how do we define that in his life? G A B on the napkin. Yeah, how yeah. right. <laughs> Did the G mean greatest? Interestingly, it didn't, but I, I think at some point that he probably, you know, that probably went through his head. Or Gary Allen Bellows. It wasn't some guy's <laughs> name, right? <laughs> he would never admit that he was trying to become the greatest ever. But, you know, when you become a great, then what, what do you strive for? And yeah. you know, I remember watching um, a, ga- a training. It was the Crusaders down in um, Christchurch. And I was talking to one of the, the coaches on the side, one of the trainers, and, and I was talking about what his attitude's like at training in the early part of the filmmaking. And he said, watch this, Richie will run back to the coach and everyone else will walk or, you know, most people will walk. And sure enough, he was the one that ran back and it was his last um, season of training with the Crusaders and he mm-hmm. still ran back. Wow, that's mind boggling in itself. But uh, again, I gotta go to the, pro- the, produ- the production side of this. What were the main things that you had to hurdle along the way? Because you're going to a World Cup yeah, that that With was crew. that was it. Yeah, <laughs> right? we were, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was that Thanks. small small thing to uh, yeah to get in amongst. We were extremely lucky that World Rugby were incredibly supportive of the film. Um, you know, we got in touch with them and explained what we were doing, and and they got it. And so we had you know accreditation and and access. But it, you know, access is is a beautiful thing. But yeah. no no one has to say yes on right. a day by day basis. And right. we were there for weeks. With the I said good and, day, know. sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. And so, and you know, you talk about the pressure, you know, on Richie's. We, we've got cameras there. A story is unfolding. He's not unaware of that. Though, interestingly, I think the thing that we came to understand watching that process, seeing him in something like the cauldron of a World Cup, is his ability to focus and compartmentalise is extraordinary. And, you know, he... I don't think we bothered him at all. It was just there's something else going on. Well, I mean, on there. You, you, the he's guy, amazing. you know, you brought up a good point. He hasn't gone through turnstiles. He's been playing in front of massive amounts of people mm. his entire life, you know, in, yeah. in essence, mm. his entire adult playing life, at least. So I don't know if a, a little bit of a camera crew is going to phase him. Did, did you have, what was your interaction with him like? It's interesting. Um, I've, I worked with him for many years beforehand. Um, I worked with him for a long time beforehand in, in some of the more commercial work mm. around the All Blacks. So I knew the environment. I knew him pretty well. But we were asking him to lose the, the media layer, which everybody has, which he's, of course. Which he's been yeah. with for his entire yeah, of life. Course. And, right. and, you know, and open up. And I think we, I interviewed him for about 25 hours in total. Straight. <laughs> you get something out of you, yeah, you're not going down. anywhere. You're not, you're not eating. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, but I had access to him before the finals, before semi-finals. It was in, it was, it was a pinch yourself kind of experience because, in fact, I didn't really allow myself to think like that because it felt too big. Yeah. It felt too, too much privilege. Um, it, so we, ju- I just focused on what do I need now and, and what can I talk to him about that will give great insight without. I mean, I, you're right, I wasn't going to put him off, but I didn't want to put an idea in his head that, that didn't need to be there. So, How, are his, how are his acting skills? Because I know you had to recreate some stuff or get him yeah. to do some stuff on camera, right, a little bit? There's a, little, there's a couple of scenes, yeah, for sure, um, like him work, walking out the tunnels, things like that, but he's done so much commercial work, it was fine. That's true. But we didn't want 
that's the thing. You have to have cameras around people a lot for them to just completely drop their guard mm. and we we didn't want to have to direct him too much so that it would just become normal for us to be around um and it did become normal he was he was amazing he you know we'd turn up and he'd offer a cup of coffee and nice. just get on with him nice yeah. uh the glider shot <laughs> isn't how, it isn't it incredible how'd we get the glider shot oh my gosh oh well he's um <laughs> that no acting required he is yeah. obviously a fully qualified pilot he's flying a glider over our ma- tallest mountain yeah in yeah. a magnificent shot magnificent beautiful countryside their tallest mountain but then there's there's shooting the glider so yes yeah so i mean i'll defer to michelle for that one because she directed that shoot and it was yeah it was a matter of pulling together we had there's a there's a bunch of pilots who are really skilled at that kind of aerial work and as soon as three yeah like one yeah Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) the bunch and so as you know you phone up and say look we're we're going to be filming richie mccaw and would you want to you know come on board that shoot and give us the benefit of your skills and so we had the absolute best of the aerial pilots and things alongside wow. for that shoot and amazing cinema because gliders obviously have those thermal lifts so they have to understand mm. when a plane's gonna well lift my, my glider doesn't have the thermal lift. <laughs> <laughs> does those incredible things it was um a pretty scary shoot actually because he knew what he was doing he was doing do it anywhere i was in the helicopter um, but we had to get out of the helicopter to get the final shots because the helicopter wasn't light enough. Right. So they dumped as many people and stuff out. You were kicking and screaming. No, I was no. quite quietly pleased, yeah. actually. I was like, <laughs> okay. I'll see you. Just let me know that goes okay. Yeah, get that shot, okay, guys? But, but yeah. Richie had um, a great, uh, like, one, a very experienced uh, pilot who's trained him a lot in the chopper. And also it was something that he wanted to do, and we certainly didn't ask him to do anything you know that he didn't really want to do mm. but it was when we got that footage back we just it was jaw jaw dropping and to see yeah. it in the cinema is extraordinary so what at what stage did you shoot the glider shot because uh, you know I'm, i've been working in film production in new york city where everything goes wrong all the time and i'm thinking as the you know oh no no that's got to be the last shot of this movie because if the thing the damn thing crashes we're, <laughs> we, we've got him in the can already we can't finish the, the film Right? Anybody thinking that? <laughs> it's like, Actually, that's the last shot. Yeah, we'll do the glider shot, Rich, but we're going to do that the last the day of principal last, photography. Yeah. yeah, and ironically, it was one of our earliest. Yeah, it was. I think it was day two or three. Yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. you make it the first day. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't invest hey, in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, wow. really it was a very special on. thing. And I, I think um, mm. the, the cinema, the audio sound was mixed by the same sound mixers that did The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. Oh, wow. Peter Jackson's yeah. studio, which is mm. like George Lucas's. It's yeah. just extraordinary. Yeah. So when you see that on the big screen and you feel like you're up in the air with him, it's really spectacular. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So we're running out of time, but I wanted to get anything that you guys wanted to point out for particular uh, particulars about the, the film and where people can see it and all that jazz so yeah so in new york the film is screening at the sinopolis in chelsea and uh, it's on there for the week from the second to the eighth and uh so yeah it's and and as i said it's seeing it in the cinema is just like nothing else it's it's really special yeah you get to feel like you're in ellis park actually Mm. the audio if you can feel the surround of the crowd Wow. It surrounds. It's quite. You never get to see rugby like that. So yeah. I think it's worth that. And after New York, it goes around the country. Um, yeah. We'll have a schedule. We'll make sure we send that through. Okay. So but, um, it, certainly, it, any. I, I think for me, um, any kids that, any kids or anybody that's interested in rugby, especially the younger ones that that um, want to be inspired. I don't think there's any better way to inspire a bunch of kids about the sport so um we had them in mind all the time and and i and we have we've we've had all these reports from mum saying i i was in putting my son's clothes away and i found a little note in his drawers you know saying what he wanted to be great wow. at and that that's you know if that's all we do that's phenomenal let alone for the rugby fans no, that's so. great you know, anybody um out there say oh what a jerk he is Richie McCall, what a jerk. You never hear that. You never hear No, you, you know? don't. Oh, what a jerk Richie McCall <laughs> is. You know, you, you, you know, the only thing that you can say negative about him, which is actually a positive in what he built his career on, it was playing the referee, you know? Yeah. Getting the ref, you know, knowing exactly where that line yeah. was, yeah. right? Sure While everybody else is crying. <laughs> and then always in the, and I watched, I was at Twickenham yeah, right. for the final. Mm. And, you know, you look at the, you meet the guy, you look at him, He's not like an NFL, you know, one of these guys. But he's, you know, he's a formidable guy. But 
Yeah. You watched the last 10 minutes or the most mm. important time in a match, and it was like he was Bugs Bunny. He was popping up everywhere in yeah. the last 10 minutes of that match. He's yeah. just in there. There he is. There's seven. There's seven. There's seven. There's seven. Yeah. There's seven. He's and everywhere. you're like, oh, my God. You know, watching it live yeah. at Twickenham in front of the, the massive crowd, and he was just everywhere. the biggest stage. There's number seven, right? Everywhere. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, yeah. great ability to read the game. Mm. Cass Avery. Michelle Matt. Walsh, I can't wait to see this film again and again and again and again. <laughs> and uh, I'm so happy that you guys took the time out of your schedules awesome. here in New York City to come on. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks, Thanks so much for having us. I really appreciate it. All right, and there you have it. We've got a little bit more class, or a lot more class here on Rugby Wrap-Up with Cass Avery and Michelle Walsh. I'm Matt McCarthy on behalf of both of them uh, for Rugby Wrap-Up at the Studio 34 Fantasy Sports Network here in New York City, signing off.